بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور ٹھیک جائے ویڈا نیو ٹاپک نیو ٹاپک ہے 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 of the continuous time Fourier series okay so basically you would be referring to the Fourier coefficients in this particular case but the heading the book has given is Fourier series so I also wrote it Fourier series first of all first of all the book says what that let me introduce you to a shorthand notation to a shorthand notation and what's the notation it's the pairing of the of the given signal x of t with its Fourier coefficients. So if this is your x of t and it could be expressed as a Fourier series, so you give it a double arrow and at this side you have your ak. So this means that this is a given signal paired with its Fourier coefficient if it has a Fourier series. Fine. Now you could see in some books it has this uh, double sided arrow. In some books you would be seeing this sort of an arrow. Uh, a half arrow or something like this so these are both of them are one in the same thing our book has this double sided arrow fine so starting off with the properties these are basically I believe 10 or 12 in number so I would divide this video into two parts the first five I do in this one the next five I do in the next video so number one is the property of linearity number one is the property of linearity so what do you have is and, and let me take the blue pen now if x 1 of t is one signal having a Fourier coefficients a 1 k right and x 2 is another signal having Fourier coefficients x a 2 k now if this is you know uh, scaled by a factor a times x1 of t plus b times x2 of t so what would be the Fourier coefficients in this particular case so that is what we need to find out so you know that our ak the Fourier coefficient this equation I won't be writing again and again is 1 upon t and let me write it for the first time with a black color so that then I do not need to mention it again and again so the analysis equation that is a k is equal to 1 upon t the integral you could write from 0 to t or you could write over one period you have an x of t you have exponential of j omega naught t and k also right j k omega naught t with a negative sign with a negative sign yes so an exponential of negative j k omega naught t this is the say, the analysis equation for to find the Fourier coefficients right now my uh, a k is what let's say I have an a dash of k for this signal right and let's say I have an a dash of k so it would be 1 upon t the integration t x of t in this particular case is now a times x 1 of t plus b times x2 of t right and this is a whole enclosed in a bracket and then you have an exponential of negative j k omega naught t and of course i miss the dt over here so you have a dt over here the rest you can do it yourself one upon t uh, integration over one period this with this this with this so you have an a times x1 t exponential of negative j k omega naught t plus you would have what plus you would have a 1 over t again if i multiply this as well inside over t it would be b times x2 of t exponential of negative j k omega naught t dt i missed over here dt is over here so i have a call in let me check so so we have written this like this so now have a look if you see this a is independent of integration so I could take it outside this b is ind independent of the integration I could take it outside so I would write this a over here I would write this b over here and do you see this 1 over tx1 this would be the Fourier coefficients that is a1 1 over tx2 this thing is the Fourier coefficient a2 so which means what 
that I have got my answer, it would be A times A1K plus B times A2K and this is what we have got. Which means that if, uh, let me check the point that the book has written. Uh, linear combination okay that if a signal is a linear combination of two signals if a lead if a signal is a linear combination of two signals the Fourier coefficient would also be the linear combination of the Fourier coefficients of that signals fine and this I did for two signals you could do it for any arbitrary number of signals the first property linearity is done the second I go in the order of the book is now time shifting time shifting so which means that if x of t has Fourier coefficients a k what if I have x of t minus t naught what would be the Fourier coefficients in this particular case so again have a look what do we have is again from the uh, from this particular example from this particular equation, let me name this coefficient at bk. Now 1 over t would be like this, integration over t. My x of t is now x of t minus t naught. It's multiplied with an exponential of j, k, omega naught. And in place of t, I have a t minus t naught. And this is with respect to t, fine. Now they have, uh, you know, uh, changed the limits. So they have said that let t minus t not be equal to an arbitrary constant, uh, that arbitrary variable tau, right? So which means that then uh, t would be equal to uh, tau minus t naught. Isn't it like this? t would be equal to tau plus t naught. t would be equal to tau plus oh, t naught. Yes, this is where I made a mistake. So now which means what that my BK would come equal to be 1 upon T. This is T over here. Now in place of X of T minus T naught, I've got my X of tau in exponential of negative J, K, uh, omega naught. And for T minus T now is again tau. And, and, and this would be D. Tau. So did I make it proper? No. And where did I make a mistake? Because over here this signal is only x of t minus t naught. This is not t minus t naught, which means that this is the same t. So now in place of t, I have to put tau plus t naught. So let me first put a tau and then a plus t naught. So I would you know write it like this: negative j uh, omega naught and t naught. T naught is the same period. Right, this is the uh, the shifting. So now, if you see, if you see this particular thing, this particular thing is what? This is uh, the same coefficient as this one. Tau and t does not matter. Of course, we've got tau. Now this is independent with respect to tau, so this would get outside of in the integration and over here you would get the same a k. So which means that the Fourier coefficient would be what? The Fourier coefficient would be multiplied with a negative j omega naught t naught. T naught is the shifting amount and you have your a k as it is over here. So this is your property number 2. Fine, property number 3 is time reversal time reversal so over here I would write it time reversal so if x of t has the Fourier coefficient a k x of minus t would have Fourier coefficient as what so this is again the question and now they have you know checked for the synthesis equation so the synthesis equation I would write with the black color as well let x of t is equal to summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity a k exponential of positive j k omega naught t isn't it like this it is now what do you have is you would basically need it for an x of negative t so for x of negative t you have it like this k running from negative infinity to positive infinity uh, a k 
exponential of now you have a negative j k omega naught t because now t is negative. So now if you see uh, I need to have a positive j k omega naught t to, in order to represent it like this to, to have the proper form of the series but this is a negative so what do I do is I can change the k by a negative k I can replace k by a negative k why because the uh, summation is of course from a negative infinity to positive infinity so this would not uh, change anything so this k is if negative so this would become positive and this would become negative so now have a look what would happen is that the Fourier coefficients over here are a k the Fourier coefficients for x of negative t would be a of minus k so the Fourier coefficient over here would be a of minus k which means that if the S uh, signal is time reversed the Fourier coefficient would also be time reversed they would be the mirror image of the previous ones mirror image of the previous coefficient now from here we have some properties that if uh, you know uh, if I write it over here so uh, don't you have any problem right so if if your x of t is e1 x of t is e1 right so this would imply that x of t would be equal to x of minus t and this would further imply what that if x of t is equal to x of minus t so x of t has Fourier coefficient a k these would be equal to the Fourier coefficients of minus t which are a of minus k so this is the first property which means that if the x of t is even the Fourier coefficient would also be even right the next is that if x of t is odd so in that case what do you have this implies that x of t would be negative of x of negative t right so this further implies that your a k would also be equal to the negative of negative a k which means that if your signal a given signal is odd the Fourier coefficient would also be odd this is deduction from this particular property the fourth property is time scaling time scaling so let me write it over here and I think I'm going very fast in this video don't you think so I'm sorry time scaling now if x of t has Fourier coefficient a k x of alpha times t would have Fourier coefficients equal to what so this is the question for this particular one so blue color so again uh, you know uh, if I have from the synthesis from the analysis from the synthesis equation x of t is equal to summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity uh, you have an a k then you would have exponential of j k omega naught now you would have an alpha t alpha t and now I would write it with the green color because red I've already used so alpha t so have a look to the Fourier coefficients first of all the Fourier coefficient for the original series is ak is ak right the next the ak for the multiplied for the scaled version as well as ak it's ak so this is fine which means that if a signal is time scaled the Fourier coefficients would remain the same the Fourier coefficients would remain the same but now a question arises what to do with this alpha t what to do with this alpha t so this has an effect on the time period and the frequency of the waveform the Fourier coefficients will remain the same but the Fourier representation will change so you write it for yourself or I will write it the Fourier coefficients will remain the same but Fourier series representation will change and this is what we have deduced from this video the Fourier series representation will change how will it change the position of the Fourier coefficient in the spectrum will change this is what this implies that the position of the Fourier coefficient in the spectrum will change the magnitude the phase would remain the same 
and of course uh, it would have a time period and frequency change as well so if the original signal x of t has a frequency of uh, let me write if the original signal x of t has a fundamental period t naught and this omega naught which is 2 pi upon t naught so now what would be the case is x of alpha t would have a period of uh, alpha times t naught right would have a t naught by alpha would have a period of t naught by alpha and it would have an omega naught which is alpha times omega naught so this would be the thing which means now again it, the, the the compression and the expansion depend on the value of alpha so if alpha is a uh, if alpha is greater than 1, the magnitude of alpha is greater than 1. So, of course, the time period would reduce, the frequency would increase. Time period would reduce, frequency would increase. And if the uh, alpha's, alpha's magnitude is less than 1, which means that the signal would uh, expand. So, for signal to expand, the time period would increase, the frequency would reduce. And this is what we have for the time scaling property. Is that fine? And I missed a point. I, well, I did not miss it, but I did not elaborate it that the Fourier series representation will change. The, the position of the Fourier coefficient in the line spectrum would change implies what? That if previously it was present at omega naught, now it would be present at alpha times omega naught. This is what I'm talking about the spectrum position of the Fourier coefficient so this is the fourth property okay so uh, let me you know, remove the board to get to the next properties okay now uh, related to this the fifth is now the frequency shifting the fifth is frequency shifting Which means that if x of t has those Fourier coefficients of a k, so if this x of t is frequency shifted, which means that the, the frequency shifting would relate to the shifting of the line spectrum, which means it would relate to the this something a k minus m relating to the shifting of Fourier coefficients, what would be the effect of this x of t? So we see this now, okay, and, and, and let me tell you again that a k was, you know what it is. So we need our new x of t now, fine. So now a of k minus m would be what? a of k minus m would be what? So 1 upon t, of course, you know, integration over one time period, x, per, x of t multiplied with an exponential of negative j, uh, multiplied with a k minus m times omega naught t dt right now uh, what do you have is uh, 1 upon t would be the same uh, over one period would be the same x of t is the same so if i can split this it would be negative j k omega naught t exponential of negative j k omega naught t and this would be a positive j m omega naught t yes it would be a positive j m omega naught t and this is with respect to t and yes so uh, if i rearrange this if i rearrange this you know so one upon t uh, x of t into exponential of uh, j m omega naught t and this is multiplied with an exponential of negative j k omega naught t the integration is with respect to t over one period so what do you conclude from here what do you conclude from here is that my uh, my uh, equation was what my equation was that a k is equal to 1 upon t integration over one period you have x of t exponential of negative j k omega naught t so which means that if x of t is my signal you multiply it with this particular thing you get the Fourier coefficient of this x of t 
now i am multiplying something with this x with this exponential term to get my fourier coefficient new fourier coefficient that is ak minus m so in that case my signal was x of t in this case my given signal for which i am finding the fourier, fourier coefficient is this particular thing which means x of t is multiplied with an exponential term and that is j m omega naught t so to shift your signal to some value m you need to multi to shift your Fourier coefficients to some value m you need to you need to do what exponential j m omega naught t is multiplied fine the next so the next is uh, multiplication and it would take a little time so let me do first is the conjugate and conjugate symmetry so this would be my sixth property which is conjugate and conjugate symmetry now uh, what is the conjugate means what that you take the conjugate of course so if x of t has Fourier coefficient x uh, a k what would be the Fourier coefficients of x conjugate of t so this is now the question fine so now considering the i would write this equation as well over here that my x of t is what it's the summation k running from negative infinity to positive a k exponential of j k omega naught t fine so now what do you have is uh, if you take the conjugate we are now interested in conjugate so we'll take the conjugate on both the sides so x conjugate of t would be represented as what k running from negative infinity to positive infinity for a k you would have the conjugate a k and then for exponential you would now have a negative j k omega naught t isn't it like this so the conjugate means like this now have a look we have the term j k omega naught t over here we have a negative j we are interested in positive j so what can i do is again that i can replace my k by negative k because uh, what happens is that uh, the the limits are from negative infinity to positive infinity so it would not have any effect so this would become positive this would become negative so the point that i need to make it is that if x of t has fourier coefficient a k the conjugate of x of t would have fourier coefficients that will be a of negative k and then conjugate so this is the property of conjugate symmetry fine now again if your x of t is real if i say what that my x of t is real so this implies what that x of t would be equal to the conjugate of x of t so if these are equal so this means what that this had fourier coefficient a k this would be equal to the a minus k is conjugate or this also implies further that the conjugate of a k would be equal to a of minus fine and this property this thing this particular thing is known as conjugate symmetry about the Fourier coefficients is that fine now what do we have they have uh, shown an example you know that if uh, your a1 is let's say 1 plus j5 fine so this a1 is basically for the signal x of t right now if you have the conjugate of it this a1 conjugate so this would be equal to 1 minus j5 and this 1 minus j5 is not that for x conjugate of t this would now be a negative k conjugate so which means that if this is a minus 1 this is representing a minus 1 for the signal x conjugate of t this is what this property is implying fine now it has uh, you know uh, a k is generally complex they have written right you know i will write it over here a k is complex generally is generally complex so if you write it uh, for example in the 
in the polar form so you have the magnitude of it and you have the phase of it or if you write it in the rectangular form so you have the real part of ak and then you have the plus the j times the imaginary part of ak isn't it like this yes so ak conjugate ak conjugate is equal to negative of ak right so this implies what that ak's magnitude is equal to both so so the mag this particular thing implies what this we, we are writing that the magnitude of ak is equal to the magnitude of a minus k fine and the phase of ak is equal to minus times the phase of a minus k isn't it like this and then what do you have over there you could see in the real uh, and imaginary part so this means that the real part of ak is equal to the real part of the a minus k and similarly the imaginary part of ak is equal to negative sign the imaginary part of a negative k this is what we have let me read out some points from the book i continue the next properties in the next video i will take a little break where are we conjugate symmetry applying complex conjugation this and that if x of t is real this happens if this is real and even a k is equal to a minus k right if this is real and even as well so the, so don't go for the even real is also fine so they have written if x of t is real and even the Fourier coefficients are also real and even right and this we have over here for real signal similarly you can see for odd okay so for even i have done for odd you do it yourself if x of t is an odd signal if x of t is an odd signal which would mean that x of uh, t would not be equal to x conjugate of t it would be something minus you do it yourself right so then what would be happen the uh the Fourier coefficients are purely imaginary and odd real and even wait 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 let me write it let me write it let me write it wait if x of t is real and even a k are also real and even fine the next is if x of t is real and odd a k are purely imaginary and odd so this does not need a proof over here you understand it you can do it yourself i finished this video over here some properties of this linearity uh, remain i do it in the next video till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers goodbye